Are you new to Branded Bistial and the Photon Hypernova format? Well, this is the video for you. Here are 10 things you must know about playing Branded Bistial. If you want 5% off any single or sealed product, head over to tierzerogames.com and use code GALZO5 at checkout. So what I wanted to show you guys today is 10 things you must know as Branded Bistial players coming into the new format. Before we begin, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you want to see my decklist before they are released, head over to Discord and consider joining as a member of the channel to get early access to that. So, do you know that Alubur and Queridus both have secret effects? The first effect of Alubur's is that when a fusion monster you control leaves the field, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, special summon the Alubur, and then negate it. For Despian Queridus, it's actually a little bit more secretive because this card hasn't been played for that long and for that much, and if it leaves the field by an opponent's card effect in your control, you can special summon a Despia monster or a Fallen of Albaz from your deck to the field. So basically what happens is that if Quiritus leaves the field, you can actually chain block both of these effects depending on what you know um, your opponent has on the field. So if you want to resolve Quiritus or the Alubur, you can just chain block using the one you want to block as chain one. And then you can just like, you know, Activate Quiridus is one, Alubur to special summon the Alubur, then you can also special summon, for example, Fallen of Albaz from the deck, activate its effect, and fuse with an opponent's monster when they basically least expect it. So, did you know that you can actually negate your own Mirror Jade and have it activate next turn as well? So, Mirror Jade says that you can send one fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard that mentions Fallen of Albaz as cost, then the effect, all in one piece, says banish one monster on the field. Also, this card cannot use this effect next turn. So only if this effect resolves and is not negated, you can then not activate it next turn. But if you have a Rindbrom on the field, which can negate the effect of a Fusion Synchro Xyz or Link monster, not your opponent's monster, but your monster as well, you can basically just negate it. The effect to return a card from the field to the hand is optional, so you don't have to do that, unless you have like a Bistial, for example, in which case you can just bounce it back to hand, and then you get, one, a search off of the monster you send, two, you don't have to banish a card, and three, you get to activate Mirror Jade the next turn as well. So Branded Lost isn't such an easy card to understand. What it says is that the activation of your cards and effects and include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when a monster is fusion summoned this way. When can your opponent actually respond or activate effects when you are fusion summoning? The first thing would be the activation of Branded Fusion. You can Ash Branded Fusion because Ash doesn't negate the activation of a card, which loss prevents. It only negates the effect. Your opponent can activate any card that they want in response to the activation of Branded Fusion, as long as it doesn't negate it. So, for example, Rule Kalos, Tier Limits Rule Kalos that negates the activation, cannot be activated against Branded Fusion. Then, we go into the summoning window. We send the Albas into Lubelion for an Albion. Starting from this summon, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until you fully complete the resolving all the summons that come after Albion. So if you would have finished Ear, your opponent could respond when they get priority back. But let's look at this chain because this is the most relevant for our combo. We'll activate this. This is on summon. They cannot respond still. Branded Lost chain to search for a card, then we can banish this and this to summon the Lubelion. Again, fusion summon window, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects yet. We discard for cost, we get Albaz, and we get the Mirror Jade. So, now most people think that your opponent, now when the chain re fully resolved, they can start activating cards and respond to, to this uh, summon, but they actually can't. What happens when you finish fusion summoning is that you as a turn player get priority back to you. So you get to perform the first action similar to what would happen when you go into the main phase. So in this scenario, when you obviously want to summon Lubelion, your opponent still cannot activate cards or effects because you're not activating an effect here. So the first action is yours to perform. Once you have lost on the field and you finish comboing, you get priority back to activate the first card or do the first action. 
So, did you actually know that Necrovelli does not prevent you from summoning Lubelion? Necrovelli says, cards in the graveyard cannot be banished, negate any card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place. Lubelion says, cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned from your hand or graveyard by tributing one level 6 or higher dark dragon monster. So, since this is not an activated effect, it's what you call an inherent summon, even though that's not an official term. It's a uh, summon that doesn't start a chain, like an activation of an effect that fusion summons. Since this is not stated in Necro Valley that cards cannot be moved out of the graveyard, it actually says that it negates any card effect that moves a card out of the graveyard. You can also you can actually summon the Lubelion like you normally would under Necro Valley because this is not an effect. This is a summoning condition. And if we're talking about graveyard effects in general, Branded has a really long end phase, what we call main phase three. You activate so many effects. So how does that actually work? So as the turn player, let's say in this game stake, you would have Cartesia to activate, Albion to activate, and then Branded Beast to activate. Since Branded Beast is uh, actually a trap card, you could activate this as a quick effect. However, you get to choose as the turn player which effect you would want to resolve first. When you go to the end phase, you as turn player get priority to activate the first effect, whichever one you want. Then you can start by activating, let's say, Albion. Your opponent then would have a chance to respond. But the end phase doesn't work in doing Albion Chainlink 1, Cartesia Chainlink 2, Beast Chainlink 3, because these are not all quick effects. These are actually um, just like activated ignition effects that trigger in the end phase. So you would have to manually say, okay, now I'm activating Albion and you cannot chain between them. You just have to pick the order. And when you activate an effect, your opponent actually has a chance to respond. So Albion, then Cartesia to go back to hand and then Branded Beast to place from the graveyard. So Dragostopelia has an effect that says that as a quick effect, you can target one monster, place a predator counter on it, and as long as Dragostopelia is on the field, the effects of monsters with a predator counter on them are negated. However, there is a separate sentence here that says, place one predator counter on it, and if it is level 2 or higher, it becomes level 1 as long as it has a predator counter. So. What does this actually mean, and a lot of people don't know that, is that even if Dragostepelia leaves the field, the counter stays on the monster and it still becomes a level 1 if it has a level uh, of 2 or higher. So, how it actually looks like is that if, for example, your opponent activates a Shangri-La in the standby phase and you chain Dragostepelia to target the T-Elements Kostura, now, what would happen when the chain resolves is that they can pop your Drago Stapelia with Wraith Soth. Now, it goes to the graveyard. However, Tier Limits Kostira won't be negated because Drago Stapelia is effect that negates the, act the activated effects of your opponent's sponsor that have a Predator counter. However, the Predator counter itself, as long as it stays on the monster, makes it a level 1. So let's talk a little bit about Cartesia, which is one of the strongest main deck monsters that Bandit has in this upcoming format. It has several really important and really powerful effects, but I want to talk about the first one. It says, if you control a Fallen of Albaz, or it is in your graveyard, and then it has a colon here, you can special summon this card from your hand. So, this is not like Lubelion just summoning itself. Why? Because of this small colon here that says that this effect is an activated effect. How it actually works is that you would have, during your main phase, since this is not a quick effect, you would have to declare Cartesia's effect in the hand. Your opponent can then negate that effect, destroy it, or do something else. But just make sure you remember that if you have the Albas on the field or the graveyard, you need to declare it in the hand then you can special summon it to the field, and only then you can activate the rest of Cartesia's effect. Another really important thing about Cartesia is that you can actually use her to protect your other monster's effects from resolving or being negated. So here, for example, in this hand, we would start with a fusion deployment, revealing the Grand Guignol, and then summoning the Blazing Cartesia onto the field. Then, when we go and summon our Alubur, 
if it gets negated by something like an infinite impermanence, an effect veiler, a chi shao, something of that sort, we can just chain the Cartesia in response. And then what would happen is that during the resolution of the card that tried to negate the face up Alubur, Alubur will no longer be on the field and the effect will resolve. Another really cool interaction about fusion deployment is that it and Bestial Serenir are so important that only these two cards, no matter what else you have in your hand, can get you to a branded fusion. So this is how you do it if you're stuck and you're actually brick and don't open a way to branded fusion. We'll summon the Cartesia with the deployment, then use the Serenir as fusion material for Granguignol, the Dusk Dragon. Then chain one Granguignol to send from extra deck or deck, Serenir as chain 2 to send a branded spell trap from the deck to the graveyard. We'll send the Retribution and Granguignol will send the Albion the Shrouded Dragon. Then Albion will activate its effect, send as cost branded fusion, then return itself to the bottom of the deck. You can then activate the Retribution, banishing it as cost, targeting the branded fusion and getting it to your hand. This was obviously a 2 for 1. But in terms of card advantage, you also gained the Grand Gnoll on the field, and you got to Branded Fusion, which is the most important card in your deck. You can use this very creatively to get any other card that you want. For example, if you have this combination, and you need Branded Lost, for example, and you don't need the Serenir, you can just use that to grab any Branded Spell Trap from your deck. So we talked about Branded Lost and the Fusion Summoning Response window, but what happens if you use something like Super Poly or something that is chainable um, to Fusion Summon under Branded Lost? So here, for example, um, we will activate Branded Lost as Chain Link 1. Then we ask our opponents if everything is okay, they give us the thumbs up, the chain has resolved. Now, as Chain Link 1 again, we activate Super Polymerization. Then we use our opponent's monsters to make a Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Then we can resolve Branded Lost in the resolution of the summon. Why is this possible? So, since Branded Lost requires you to Fusion Summon, and it only activates when you Fusion Summon, the last thing in the chain must be a Fusion Summon. So for example, imagine that we activate Lost, they chain Arizard, and then we chain Super Poly. The chain will resolve backwards, Super Poly, then Arizard, then the activation of Branded Lost. Now, once we Fusion Summon with the Super Poly, the last thing that will happen will actually be the activation of Branded Lost, and not the Fusion Summon itself. This is why if you are going to Super Poly your opponent under Branded Lost, make sure it happens as Chain Link 1. The Fusion Summon has to happen at Chain Link 1, otherwise Branded Lost doesn't actually protect it. And lastly, let's look at one of the more powerful decks of the next format, which is of course Kostura. This is a turn 2 board where we already have 3 of our zones blocked. But thankfully, Konami designed branded with an in-engine out to the Kostura board. So, how would you approach a board like this without any board breakers? Well, it's a bit simpler in Branded because Branded Fusion now becomes a board breaker. So, what you would do here is activate the Branded Fusion, then everything goes to the Banished because of a Rise Heart. You would summon directly from your deck the Rindbrum. So, Rindbrum again says that when a Fusion Synchro Exceeds or Link Monster's effect is activated, you can negate that effect, then return one monster from the field to the hand. So, what happens now? Why can we out this board? Well, Kastura Riseheart says that um, any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. Once per chain, each time a card is banished, attach one banished card to this card as material. You see any word missing here? The word can. This means that if it doesn't say you can, it's a mandatory effect. And mandatory effects activate always as chain link one. What happens now is that the Arise Heart is triggered because cards were banished to attach card to itself as material. And then since we already have a monster that can negate it on the field, we will just chain Rindbrum as chain link 2. Then we can also return one monster from the field to the extra deck. Then we get all of our zones back and you can just basically continue playing from here. So, these have been 10 important things you need to know about playing Branded Bistial in the Photon Hypernova season. 
Let me know in the comments what do you think about this video. Are there other secrets that you should know as a branded bestial player? Make sure to leave a thumbs up on the video, subscribe if you are new as always, join our Discord community that will be in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.